translation of the name Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But they have converted it into Parakletos, which one of its meanings is a comforter, irrespective whether it's Paraklete or Parakletos. Alhamdulillah, both these meanings befit the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. But many Christians say that this prophecy about the Comforter to come refers to the Holy Spirit. Now, if we analyze, the prophecy clearly mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter shall not come. The criteria for the Comforter to come is that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, should go. If he goes, the Comforter shall come. Only after he departs will he send him. So the major criteria for the Comforter to come is after Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, departs. From the Bible we know that the Holy Spirit was already there before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. He was there in the womb of Elizabeth. He was there when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was born. He was there in the Feast of Pentecost. So surely, this prophecy cannot refer to the Holy Spirit. It refers to no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's further mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. For he, when the Spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hear shall he speak. He shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me. This prophecy again refers to no one but the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad It says, I have many things to say unto you. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is saying, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hear, shall he say. He shall guide you to the truth. He shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me. And this prophecy does not refer to anyone but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I have given a separate talk only on the prophecy of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Bible, which you can speak for us together only on this topic. It's further mentioned in the glorious Quran. In Surah Rod, chapter number 13, verse number 38, it says, Likulli ajlin kitab. In every age have we sent a book, have we sent a revelation. By name, there are four revelations mentioned in the Quran. Torah, Zabur, Injil, and the Quran. Torah is the wahi, the revelation, which was given to Moses, peace be upon him. Zabur is the wahi, the revelation, which was given to Prophet David, peace be upon him. Injil is the wahi, the revelation, which was given to Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. And Quran is the last and final revelation, which was given to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. By name, only four revelations are mentioned in the glorious Quran. But in every age, Almighty God has sent a revelation. There are several other revelations, for example, Sufi, Ibrahim, etc. But by name, only four are mentioned. All the revelations that were revealed before the last and final revelation of the glorious Quran, they were meant only for a particular group of people. And the message which was sent was meant to be followed in totality only for a particular time period. But since Quran was the last and final revelation, it was not meant only for the Muslims or for the Arabs. It's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 1. Alif Lam Ra. This is the book we have revealed to thee, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, so that thou may leadest the mankind from the depths of darkness to light. It says, so that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, will lead the whole of mankind, not only the Muslims or the Arabs, from the depths of darkness to light. It's mentioned for Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 52. Here is a message for mankind. Let them take warning therefrom. Let them know there is one God. Let the men of understanding take heed. It's mentioned in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 185. Ramadan was the month in which the Quran was revealed. 
as the guidance to the whole of humankind, as the criteria to judge right from wrong. It's mentioned in Surah Az-Zumur, chapter 39, verse number 41. We have revealed to thee, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the book to instruct the humankind. It doesn't say to instruct only the Muslims or the Arabs, but to instruct the whole of humankind. Since Quran is the last and final revelation, it was not meant only for the Muslims or the Arabs, it was meant for the whole of humankind. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number one, in the book of Iman, hadith number eight, our beloved Prophet said, that the religion of Islam is based on five principles, on five pillars. The first is, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. The second is, establishing Salah. The third is Zakat. The fourth is Psalm, and the fifth is Hajj. The first pillar is, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. There's no God but Allah, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. It's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse number 177. It is not righteousness that you turn your face to the east or west, but it is righteousness that you believe in Allah, you believe in Almighty God, you believe in the last day, you believe in his angels, in his books, and his messengers. I started my talk by quoting a verse from the glorious Quran, from Surah Al-Imran, chapter number three, verse number 64, which says, Kul, ya hilal kitab. Say, O people of the book, Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah, na'buda illallah. That we worship none but one almighty God. That we associate no partners with him. That we erect not among ourselves. Lords and patrons other than Allah. Find tawallah. If then they turn back. Fakulu shadu, say ibe witness, be anna muslimoon, that we are Muslims bowing our will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This verse of the glorious Quran shows us a way how to speak with different types of people, especially the Ahle Kitab. It says, Talo ila kalmitin sawa im bainana bainakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah, na'buda illallah, that we worship none but one Almighty God. That we associate no partners with him. That we erect not among ourselves. Lords and patrons other than Allah. We have to come to the common terms, to the similarities which are mentioned in the Bible and the Quran. It's clearly mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4. It says, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say, He is Allah one and only. Allahu samad. Allah, the absolute and eternal. Lam yalid, walam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Walam yakul lahu kufwan ahad. There is nothing like him. This is a four-line definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, given in the glorious Quran. If any person says, so and so candidate is God, if that candidate fits in this four-line definition of Surah Ikhlas, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as God. The first is, Qul hu Allah ahad. Say, He is Allah one and only. Second, Allah hu samad. Allah, the absolute and eternal. Lam yalid, walam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Walam yakul lahu kufwan ahad. There is nothing like him. This four-line definition of Surah Ikhlas is called as the touchstone of theology. Theo means God. Logic means study. Theology means the study of God. Surah Ikhlas is the touchstone of theology. Any person is saying that so and so candidate is God. Any person is worshipping any God. Put that God to the test of Surah Ikhlas. If he passes this four line definition of Surah Ikhlas, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as God. The similar message is given in the Bible. It's mentioned in the Bible in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number six, verse number four. Moses, peace be upon him, says, Shema Israelo, adna adna 
It's a Hebrew quotation which means Yoro Israel, the Lord, our God is one God. And when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was asked, which is the first of the commandments? He repeated verbatim what was mentioned by Moses, peace be upon him. It's mentioned in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 12, verse number 29. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, Shema.